Hi everyone, I hope you're well. Long time no see. So this is the first of 17 live streams. 17. And that brings us up to, well, just after the first exam early in May. Uh, please introduce yourself in the comments, say hello. Uh, it'd be nice to know that you're here. And you'll get a chance to answer some questions later on, because it's not all one-way traffic. It's me telling you some stuff, but then also you getting a chance to answer some questions too. So please introduce yourself in the comments and, uh, and we'll crack on. Today's plan is uh, system architecture. It is the first thing on the, uh, on the specification. And it's a challenging one. And it's often one of the first sets of questions in the exam as well. So let's jump into the, uh, the presentation I've made for you. And by the way, everything I'm doing here, um, this PDF I will share with you um, uh, on Satchel One after the uh, after the the live stream, so that will give you a chance to uh, to have a look at it. Please say hello. I know there are quite a few of you lurking there, so do say hello in the comments, and I will uh, introduce you. All right. So system architecture. This is obviously all about how the how the CPU actually works. So let's jump in and have a look at. So you've got several considerations uh, when it comes to the CPU, and this is from the spec. So we're looking at the purpose of it. What is it for? What does it do? And that's the sort of opening sort of questions they tend to ask you. What's the CPU for? What does it do? And that means that you've got to talk about the fetch, decode, execute cycle. Um, and the fetch, decode, execute cycle is actually one of the easiest things to cover off because it's 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 simply a sentence that you can learn. And they will give you a uh, they will give you a Mark for that. Oh, we have somebody in. Hang on. Uh, Ishak. Hello, dear boy. How are you? Nice to see you. Uh, ah, not two ends, though. It's just one end, honestly. Computer scientists are supposed to be accurate. Let's at least be accurate. Come on. One end. Uh, so that's the fetch, decode, execute cycle. Then the next sort of tranche of stuff you've got to know is this stuff, which is, I think it challenges everyone. So this requires you knowing what each of these components does. And in fact, that's tricky, but then also you've got these registers and everyone gets confused about what the different registers do. But we'll look at a way today of trying to tick off the ones that are easy and then you're left with, 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 with one or two to try to work out what they do. There's no shortcut to this. I've made a video, put it on YouTube, how the CPU works. And if you actually watch that a few times and take some notes and see about how the how the data moves around inside the CPU. This all makes a lot more sense. Just learning things off by heart is quite challenging. So give that a go. All right, so let's uh, let's instead go on to the next one. Hang on a second, there we go. So you need to know what the actions are that happen at each stage of the fetch decode execute cycle, uh, what each component does, the purpose of each register, and the difference between storing data and an address. And that, of course, has got to do with the von Neumann architecture, which separates data and addresses. And in fact, the whole, the whole setup is that way. You've got a data bus and you've got an address bus and you've got a system bus as well. And that bus is, is a, a sort of super fast highway, if you like, a, 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 special, a special etched cable into the computer that can move data around really quickly. So and what you don't need to know is about data passing between registers. So that's what you do and don't need to know for uh, this topic. So I will send you, you've got a copy of this anyway, but I, you, I'll send you a copy of this particular PDF later on. This is the knowledge organizer where pretty much everything you need to know is held on one page. I know that's way too small for you to see uh, from here, but I'm going to jump through into this and show you the different parts of it. All right, so first of all, on the right-hand side there, you can see uh, the fetch, decode, execute cycle. And this is what you're going to need to pretty much learn off by heart, okay? This area down here. If you are able to memorize most of this, there's a really good chance that you will gain some marks in the exam for this. So we'll start over here and talk about uh, the, three, the three parts of the cycle where the CPU fetches something, it then decodes it to work out what it is, and then it executes it, it does whatever the instruction is. So in the fetch cycle, it copies it copies the memory from the MAR, which is the memory address register. And we know that a register is a super fast, uh, low capacity uh, piece of memory. 
Um, and it has to work really, really it, it has worked really, really quickly. When you think the latest, uh, the latest iPhone was rated at one trillion uh, executions per second, um, which is which is quick. So these these registers are actually quite small capacity wise, but they're super quick. They're the fastest sort of memory that you can have, and that's why they sit. One of them actually sits the level one. Um, they actually sit inside the CPU, so there's no distance for them to travel neither. Um, oh, we've got a question. Ishak, hang on a second, let me try and get to this. My mouse likes to behave very weirdly on this. Hang on two seconds. So you've said to me, uh, what does increment mean? Right, good question. Increment means increasing. So when it increments by one, it's increasing it by one. So it's it's a counter. So that is you. Yeah, you're looking over here, aren't you? So this is this bit here. Where it says, increment PC to point at next instruction. So literally, the program counter is pointing at the instruction and going, it's this one, now it's this one, or this is the next one, this is the next one, this is the next one, this is the next one. That's literally all that it's doing. So the program counter is pointing towards the next instruction. Um, so that's what the PC does. Uh, oh, Mohammed, dear boy, how are you? Uh, nice to see you. Let me uh, say hello to you. That's very colourful. Nice to see you, old chap. Hope things are well. I got blown around quite a lot coming home today. It was very windy. Uh, yes, yeah, so the increment, increase. And you know when you do a count control loop and you're incrementing it by one? That's the word they use for add one to it. Increment sounds more fancy, doesn't it? Then you've got the, uh, the so, so fetch happens first of all, that the instruction is fetched. Um, and that's the, those are the three things that happen when the instruction is fetched. Then it gets decoded. And the instruction in the memory data register is decoded by the CU, which is the control unit. We'll get to that in a second. And that's talking about about the components. You've got the registers and you've got the components, these two different areas that you need to understand. Um, and the CU, the control unit, may prepare for the next step by loading values into the memory address register or the memory data register. Now think about this. When you've got um, when you're when you're saving stuff all over the place or you're or you're or you're pulling data from one place, you need to know where to get it from and you need to know where you're going to put it. And that's where the address comes in. So you, this MAR, the memory address register, is where things are going to be. Ah, Sanuka, dear chap, how are you? Welcome. I hope all is well. That's quite an impressive, that's like a ninja of some kind. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'll flex for you, Mohammed. That was super impressive. I was very impressed with your, with your, with your, um, with your mark. Just keep, just keep going. Because I'm looking for uh, I'm looking for a pair of eights for you. Who knows? Even a nine. Uh, just just keep going because your detail was good. This topic, by the way, is one of those ones where you can't sort of. Um, uh, what's my CPI for computer science now? Your sixth form application has got to be in until the twenty seventh of Jan. Uh, yeah, I can repeat that bit. Um, so you'll get your CPI from me. Um, I think next week or the week after, but. Uh, your CPI is going, in many ways, to reflect how you did in the uh, how you did in the exams. Obviously, I'm, I'm not giving much away there, but uh, you're going in the right direction. Put it this way: if you want to do computer science at A level, you absolutely could. All right, the decode bit. I'll go through that again. So the instruction in the memory data register. So don't forget, you've got these registers, right? They are super fast, as in speed-wise, um, read-write speeds. Let's get it. Let's be accurate. Super fast read-write speeds low capacity so you can't store much in there so the instruction in the memory data register is decoded by the cu so the cu looks at it and says what am i supposed to do now as a result of that the control unit may prepare for the next stop step by loading new values into the memory address register or the mdr all right and ishak i will say if you if you go through i've, I've done three videos on on the cpu there's one of them that shows this next diagram that I'll jump to in a second. And you might find that really helpful because if you see the data moving around the CPU, you watch it once or twice and you go, oh, I see, okay. Because it is, it, it is like, it, I'm saying it's a like a machine. It is a machine that's simply processing data and it's doing it in a certain way. And once you see it traveling around the CPU, then all of these words tend to make a lot more sense. Because this guy von Neumann designed this because it was an effective way of, of, of processing information. And it's worked pretty well because it's stuck since the 1950s. So, um, and the design was from even before then. So 
So it, it's a good way of moving data, of processing data. All right, last bit is the execute, which is over here. So this is where whatever whatever's being decoded, whatever the instruction actually is, this is where it happens. So the instruction is performed, and the instruction could be a whole host of different things. It could mean loading data, writing data. And don't forget, we're talking about reading and writing. So if you're bringing something in, question for you chaps, where would you be bringing stuff in from? I say stuff, where would you bring data in from? Where might it come from? There's a question for you. Uh, it could be a logical operation. And we know our from our logic is greater than, less than, and all that sort of uh, all that sort of business. It might change the address in the PC. So the program counter, I've got we've got we've got six in currently. We've had twelve in, which is good. So do say hello in the comments. Do introduce yourself. It's nice to uh, it's nice to know who's here. Um, I can also boast to your parents and carers that you've been coming along. So uh, I'll take that opportunity. Um, Instructions performed. Yeah, so so the the next address may be changed in the PC. So it might go and do something different as a result of, of this particular instruction, or it might halt the program. Now, I know that's a heck of a mouthful, um, but that gives you a flavor. And it's nice to have a sort of half a page ready reckoner of, how, of what actually happens during the fetch decode execute cycle. But as you'll see from the um, past paper questions later on, you can actually describe things more simply than um, down here, and I'm not going to go through this because it will be very long, tedious, and irritating. But down here, I have I made a list of all of the sort of buzzwords, all of the all of the words you might need to understand to make sense of this topic. So that's a bit of a, a sort of French to English job there. So just so you understand what things are called: bit, cache, clock speed, control unit, all that. So that's there. Yeah, have a glance through that. You should know most of them. There might be a few things in there that you're not quite uh, not quite clear on. All right, so let me jump onto the next bit. This is where I want to spend a bit of time. Um, so this is the diagram that shows you how the CPU works. And let me just um, let me just identify what actually happens here. Is that down at the bottom here the input device? So say for example, this could be a a mouse or a keyboard. Or it could be, uh, it could be any input device. Um, but any input device would, would, this information would be coming into the CPU. But you've also got down here the memory, and no one answered my question today. Is that the main memory is main memory? Did I just say the main memory is main memory, which is also known as RAM? Okay, because RAM is uh, where everything that you're doing, all the all the, all the programs you're currently using, all the instructions currently being carried out, they're being held in RAM. So, so RAM is slower than the uh, memory inside the CPU. So things are loaded into RAM and out of RAM. And we're not going to have time to do virtual memory today, but that's, that, that's, that's when... Let's, let's get to that later on. So RAM is where the data is, is loaded in from or, or, or saved, written to. Um, now, let's jump through these different bits of the, of the CPU. You've got uh, the component tree. You've got the control unit here. The control unit uh, is cache inside the CPU. Mm. Now, let's answer that question. That's, Ishak, you are asking a lot of very good questions. Right, the answer is... No, it's not inside the, C the CPU, but you've usually got three, four or five different levels of cache. So, and I've got a diagram actually to show you, um, which, I'll, which I'll do in a second. The fastest, uh, the fastest cache sits on the CPU itself. The one that's slightly larger capacity and slightly slower, often because it's lower, uh, because it's got a smaller capacity, sits a bit further away. And you've got a larger one again that sits slightly further away. And the further the data has to travel, the slower that the process is going to be. So it doesn't sit inside it, but it sits on it. It sits, it sits right there. Um, so that is your memory, okay? And don't forget, cache holds the uh, frequently used data and instructions. There's another mark for you there somewhere with uh, frequently used data and instructions. All right, where was I? Control unit. Control unit... Um, these definitions, this is worth a couple of marks in the exam in terms of what these different components do. So the control unit over here, it is the boss. It's in overall control. It's like the, 
the manager of a football team. Um, it executes the program instructions using the fetch decode execute cycle. That's what they'll want to hear you say. It's an overall control of the CPU and it executes program instructions using the fetch decode execute cycle. It also controls the flow of data. So depending upon whether they turn that into a one or two or a three marker, those are your three possible marks on that one. All right, so let's have a look at the next one. This is the ALU, the arithmetic and logic unit. So you've got two things going on here. We've got logic and we've got arithmetic. Arithmetic, adding, dividing, subtracting, etc. And the logic is the greater than, less than, and or not. So you've got these two separate um, sorts of calculations going on inside this area. So the arithmetic logic unit, it's a powerful calculator um, and it performs functions. Um, and it adds, subtracts, divides, as you can see. So, and it does binary shifts as well, which is something that could pop up pop up in the exam. Um, and uh, inside, I suppose I should now toss to talk about a register. And there's a register that sits inside the ALU, and it's the accumulator. And the accumulator um, stores intermediate results. So say if it's adding six things together, the accumulator might hold the running total as, as it goes through, and then, it then until, the, until the final uh, result needs to be output uh, elsewhere. So that's the ALU. Then we've got, uh, what else have we got? We've got the registers. So if the ALU stores the results, what does the calculations? Okay, good questions, good question, good question. The calculations are performed. So the ALU does the calculations and the accumulator holds the uh, results, okay? But then those results will be output elsewhere. So you've got, it's, it's a bit like having a sort of a, a little blackboard where you're storing, yeah, does that make sense? So the, the accumulator is like a little scratch board, a little sort of blackboard where you're holding intermediate results of what's happening, but you're doing all the number crunching, but it's like having fingers to remember what the, what the answers of sums are. Do you understand? It's that, it's that sort of idea. That's the role the accumulator uh, performs. So then we've got these registers and it, I, I, I know it is hard to remember what these uh, registers do. So we've got one register over here. We've got the memory address register here. We've got the memory data register here. And we've got the program counter here, okay? So these all perform a different function. Let's do the program counter uh, first of all. Um, it holds the memory address uh, of each instruction in the cycle. And it actually holds the next memory address. So that's this bit here, okay? So that's what the CPU does. So it's, it, it is literally pointing at the next instruction that needs to happen. So it's keeping, it's keeping it, because when you, when, you, when you run a program, the instructions are happening in a certain order. So the next instruction that's gonna be decoded, it's gonna be fetched and decoded and executed. It's fetched, the, CP, the, uh, the PC is pointing to it, and then it gets decoded and executed, all right? So that is that one. Then we've got the memory address register. The giveaway here, or the MAR, the giveaway here is that it's got the word address, okay? And then down here, we've got the memory data register, and the giveaway is that one holds data and one holds memory, which is pretty straightforward, isn't it? So in, the, in terms of the memory address register, it holds the next memory address to be used. But don't forget, the next memory address is where it is, because it's, 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 an, it's an address, like your, like your home address. It's a location. So it, it, it's simply holding where the next thing that needs to be used is going to be held, okay? Um, the location of the next data instruction. And then the, um, the memory data register, this guy down here, this holds the actual data or instructions from the address held in the MAR, okay? So like I say, me explaining it in words, it can be, it, it tends to go around in your head a bit. Watch the video that I've made so you can see the data actually circulating around the CPU. And then it starts to make a lot more sense really quickly. Um, but this page, if you are able to describe what happens with the components and with the registers on this page, you're going to be in a really good place for this topic. But it's not a topic where you can sort of bluster a bit. You know which word I want to use. It's not one of those topics. You need to actually know it inside out. There's no... There's no hiding from it. So find a way of doing it. Um, 
you could use mnemonic, mnemonics to try to learn the different uh, registers. But I think if you go and watch that video and take some notes, once you've got it in your head of, of, of how the data moves around, the whole thing becomes an awful lot easier. So that is, uh, that's the anatomy of the, of the CPU. And I mean, just out of interest, because it probably helps you keep it inside your head, this guy, John von Neumann, who was a polymath, he was, he was a physicist, he was a, he was an, an, a mathematician, he was, he, he, he knew his way around all sorts of disciplines. He was a genius, really super smart guy. He was the first person who separated the address from the data. And that's what made this architecture, this CPU architecture, stand out. There are other architectures. Um, what does one next to memory say? Your head's blocking the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, hang on a second. Let me get out of the way. I'll go this way. Whoop. Okay. So that says hold program instruction or data. Okay. So it holds the program instruction or data. That one is the RAM. Okay. Oh, come and chat to me about whoever that is tomorrow. Um, no one's going to go near you. I will, I will, I will, I will deal with them. So, uh, yeah, come and talk to me tomorrow about that. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's that one. Uh, ah, Ishak, to answer your question, and this is probably easier than me waffling on. All right. So if you imagine the register, See the register over here. This is cache memory, by the way. I might actually give you a clue by telling you what I'm talking about. This is, uh, we're talking about cache memory. Cache memory is, uh, has got a faster read-write speed than RAM, but it's got a slower read-write speed than uh, the memory register inside the CPU, right? So can you see how I've been, I, I, I was very pleased with this. Um, hello, Ziggy, how are you? This uh, Mo, Mo, Mo's my hero. He's 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 exceeding his um he's exceeding his challenge target grade by so much that he's my he's my genuine hero. So uh, you know I can't hear a bad word said about him, Ziggy. Um, yeah, I, I'm also fairly aware of that, Pablo. Good to see you, and Ziggy. Good to see you as well. So this diagram here is supposed to be telling you that you've that memory memory ranges from small capacity to high capacity and memory ranges from uh, fast read write speeds or slow read write speeds to faster read write speeds register the fastest level one cache the next fastest and so on until you get to um, virtual memory which is using your hard drive as ram there we go giving it away all right and if you look at those arrows the further away from the cpu it gets the slower it gets generally and the read write speeds increase but the actual, the capacity of it also decreases as you get further towards the CPU. So that is your cache, your cache information. And cache holds um, holds the most frequently used data and instructions. There's a mark there for you. Hold the most frequently used data and instructions. Um, so I'm going to very quickly uh, show you this. I just want to write down on my little pad here. This is this is something that you need to know is that cache holds frequently. I'm assuming you can't read my handwriting as usual. Uh, use holds frequently used um, instructions. Okay, that is what you need for cache. Oh, there's a decent in the house. How are you, dear boy? Nice to see you. Uh, let me say hello to my Deason. Where is he? Although Deason wrote a um, wrote a flowchart, which um, was so frustrating, I had to go and seek medical help. But let's not go into that now. Um, I'm still not quite over it. Um, uh, yes. So that's what the cache does. Uh, yes. Uh, right. Let's get back to this one. Where are we? Here. Here. Yes. Right. Good, so that's cash. Hopefully, um, Ishak, you asked a question on cash. That statement on holds frequently used instructions is what I put here. That's what that's the buzzword for um, uh, for what what cash does. So it's a fast memory. It's a bit like having something on your desk. All right, decent. I have gone on about your flowchart for the last time ever. I will never mention it again until I next remember. Okay, 
no, I won't. I, it's it, it's done now. I'm I'm over it. I've I've moved on. I, I'm going to try to live on this later. Uh, right, where's my thingy? Here. That's where I am. All right. So that is that one. Let's go on to the next one. And I've got some quizzing to do. Where are we? What time is it? Fifty-five. Okay, we're doing all right. Uh, five minutes each. So I'm not actually going to run through this with you because I've already done it. But I thought that this, um, in terms of the purpose of the CPU, and if you remember the purpose of the CPU over here, let me get my little rectangle, and let me get my arrow. The purpose of the CPU is to uh, is to uh, fetch the the purpose of the CPU is the fetch decode execute cycle. And the fetch decode execute cycle involves that. Does read write speeds matter when talking about cache in the exam? Uh, no. No, 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 it doesn't really. Read write speeds. Um, you talk about, you'd probably most be talking about read write speeds when you are comparing um, a solid state hard drive with a magnetic one. Because the magnetic hard drive has got slower read write speeds. The solid state drive has got faster read write speeds, but the solid state drive um, is more expensive, uh, but it has no moving parts, okay, and it's uh, less and it's more robust. So that's where you would, but it, it, it's kind of um, uh, they they might ask you for a definition of what a register is, and they might ask you for a definition of what cache is. So you can just say it's a it's a block of memory with uh, with with relatively high read write speeds. So. Those three points there, fetch next instruction from memory, uh, decode instruction, and execute the instruction, that is a definition of what the, uh, the fetch decode execute cycle is, okay? And the purpose of the CPU is to carry out the fetch decode execute cycle, and that's what it is. So very often they chuck something in very early on. They didn't do it this time, they did it in the exam before. They said, what's the purpose of the CPU? And you say to, to, to carry out the fetch, uh, it fetches instructions, it decodes instructions, it executes instructions through the fetch decode execute cycle. And that will often get you the marks there. All right, so that's um, okay. Well, virtual memory. So virtual memory is when you are um, you haven't got enough memory uh, to carry out what in 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 RAM. So it's when your RAM is full. So you know when you buy RAM, you will buy. 8, 16, 32, how many gigabytes of RAM you buy. And we know that RAM, it's only when you, when you do computer science, you realize that RAM is actually probably one of the most important components. So not buying enough RAM is, an, is, a, is a major error with a computer because it holds everything that you're doing. So if, if RAM becomes full, then your, your, the CPU uses a part of your hard drive as RAM. And that's what virtual memory is called. Um, now the problem is there's there's several problems. First of all, the it takes longer. So you, you you're then moving data from your hard drive into RAM and from RAM into your hard drive. So you, you you're trying to sort of free up data on RAM to put it on the hard drive and then moving it back again. That takes time. Secondly, um, so it's slower uh, in terms of read write speeds, but it's also very bad for your hard drive because RAM is designed to be written to X hundreds of thousands or millions of times, whereas your hard drive isn't designed that way. Hello, how are you? Thank you for coming. Who's that handsome man? It's very impressive. God, I'd love to meet him. Looks like a great guy. Um, I hope this is proving useful to you, Paul. So uh, answering your question, yeah, so that's what virtual memory is. Does that make sense? So it, it's when you have to use your hard drive as RAM. Um, and it's useful, but it's it does a thing called trashing your hard drive. Um, and it is literally, uh, it is literally this word here. It's called trashing your hard drive. And that's when you are writing and reading, well, writing to mainly, uh, trashing your hard drive. You're writing to it so frequently that it ends up just destroying your hard drive. So people often don't, when they buy a computer, go go for the cheapest model, which is quite understandable. But if you don't buy enough RAM for what you're doing, say, for example, if you're doing video editing um, and it requires, or if you're, oh, if you're doing ad animations, things like that, you know, um, 
where where you require a lot of RAM, or if you're gaming, it requires a, a lot of RAM. Um, you know, that's why Xboxes and, and Playstations are designed specially around that. Um, would virtual memory affect SSD as well? Yeah, it's it, it's the same thing. Is that um, it's a bit like comparing, right? Even though um, even though ca even though RAM and uh, your hard drive do the same thing in that they 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 store data and they allow data to be read and written. It's a bit like comparing a professional camera with a an, an amateur camera. There's a reason why you know the cameras the paparazzi have uh, are going to cost you six thousand pounds. It's because they can take you know six hundred thousand images, whereas the ones you buy in Dixons or or Curry's you can maybe take a sort of eighty ninety thousand images with. So it, it it's what they're designed for. So that that's not what your SSD or your magnetic hard drive is designed to do. So it would be. It would be, and, and it's a high level question, this one. And it's one that they chucked in a couple of years ago. So I fancy they might, they might do something on virtual memory. So it's demonstrating that knowledge that A, what it's for, and B, the impacts of doing it is that it, 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 it's, it's got slower read write speeds because you've got to move data around between drives. And it's also bad for your, your, your hard drive. So it will, um, it will limit the life of your hard drive. Okay, right, that's that one. Lots of good questions, and it works much better when you guys throw at me what you are struggling with. I've been through these. So this is the definition of what these different components are. The control unit, which is the boss, the ALU, which is the calculator, and the registers, um, which are the super fast, low capacity, super fast read write speeds. Let's be accurate. Low capacity blocks of memory, um, which will either be storing data or instructions. No, we will either be storing um, uh, addresses or data and then we've got cache there we go high speed random access memory which is built into the processor so yeah it's 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 it it sits it sits on the processor so it, it it's there okay so that's your cache and those are all your different parts of the cpu what else have i got here <coughs> i've already done this um uh it was actually this one has got the addition of the the CIR. So don't worry too much about that because I've covered that. And what I've told you is what you should do for the exam. Because the CIR doesn't appear in um, doesn't appear in the exam. They don't call it the CIR. So ignore that part. Right. <laughs> Yes, you even get a quiz time jingle, which gave me a chance to have a little drink. OK, fingers on buzzers, please. Is it A, B, C or D? You tell me. Let's have a look and see what you think. Is it A, B, C or D? The ALU, what is it? OK, the answers are coming through. We've got Deason who's saying A. We've got Zainab. Hi, Zainab. How are you doing? Uh, thanks for coming. Who's A? We've got Sanuka. Who's A? We've got Pablo. Who's A? We've got Ishak. Who's A? I'm seeing a bit of a, a, a bit of a sort of trend here. Should we see? Uh, should we see? Put you out of our misery and see where we are. Lots of A's. So you're all superstars. Ishak and Paul. Outstanding. All really good. Okay, so A's. You are superstars. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, inside the CPU, you will find, what will you find? They like this sort of thing. Did you notice how many of these, um, in the mock, how many of the, uh, they did a, a table. And they love tables you tick and they can make them quite hard. And I've noticed they've also grown a real love for the gap fill exercise. Oop, Sanuka's in there. So we've got Sanuka with a C. Hang on, let's try and get this right. We've got Sanuka with a C. We've got Jelly with an AA. Uh, AA. Hello, Jelly. We've got uh, Sanuka with a weight. We've got Decent with an A. We've got Sanuka with a mm. We've got Jelly with an A. We've got Ishak with an A. Welcome, Jelly. We've got Yikos Rams in CPU. We've got Paul Burner with an A. Okay. Nerve the Vibade U is. Mm. Okay, so shall we see what the answer is? The answer is A. You are all absolute superstars. 
Okay, I applaud you all. So let's see what this next one is. Okay, it's a gap fill. Don't say I don't treat you well. So it's a gap fill. Uh, so the um, the MAR stores the of data, which is either being sent or fetched to RAM. Paul Burner has come in like a squirrel up a tree with a dress. What do we think? Do we like this? Super quick. I mean, the guy looks smart, to be fair. We've got Jelly with a dress. We've got Decent with a dress. We've got Pablo with a dress. You're all addressing. Okay, 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 okay. You're all addressing. I think the answer is a dress. Uh, I've got a barking dog. That is outstanding. Okay. Right, next. What time is it? Oh, five. Okay. We'll do a few more of these. Uh, the first stage of the fetch decode execute cycle is... I'm going to say this about this one. I got a bad feeling about this. Uh, extra bonus marks for knowing which film that comes from. Not that I'm very sad. But this is the one that people don't know. Ooh, answer's coming in. Sanuka is saying C. Ah, Sanuka's saying C if I can catch him. Pablo saying C. Ishak saying C. Dissent saying C. Sanuka is too quick. Paul Burner, C. Jelly, C. You are all absolutely astonishing. It is C. Top Gun. That was very impressive. Okay. All right, let's push on, let's push on. Uh, question five. Mm, select the registers of the CPU. Mm. Something people like to get wrong quite regularly. So let's see if we can get this one sorted out. The registers of the CPU. What? God, Ishak is like a, it's like Usain Bolt with his mouse and keyboard. Ishak says D and E. Uh, Tash is in the Top Gun. Hello, Tash. Thanks for coming. Sanuka is ADE. Um, what else have we got? We've got DEA, okay, which is remarkably like ADE, I feel. Uh, shall we see? Let's have a look and see. Oh, there's quite a few coming in, actually. We've got uh, Disson, who says EAD. We've got Paul Burner with DE. We've got Sanuka, who's saying hi, Tash. We've got Jelly with BDE. We've got Tash saying, hey, Sanuka, so that's all good. Right, let's have a look at that. Uh, we've got, I think we've got that right, actually. B, D, E. That was good. Okay. Outstanding. Um, very, very impressive. Let's go on to this one. Select the components. All right, stop that. Uh, select the components of the CPU. We've got CU, ALU, ROM, ACK, PC. They love a question like this. All these little, um, um, what are they called? Um, not L. What is it when you've got two letters together? Um, not, what are they called? Abbreviations? No. I can't think what they're called. Uh, BCE. Okay. That's going to say, what's ACK? Uh, what's ACK? That is the accumulator. Uh, BCE uh, says Sanuka. Uh, a, B, D, E, says Pablo. A, B, E, D, says Decent, which is the same as what Pablo said. Uh, Ishak says A, B, D, E. Uh, we've got Jelly, A, B, E. Uh, we've got Jelly with D, A, B, E, D. Okay. Jelly, Jelly with A, B, D, E. Make your mind up. Paul, A, B, E, D. Okay, okay, okay. I think we're getting the picture. Okay, so let's have a look and see where this one takes us. We've got A and B. So the, well, actually, that's a mistake. The, the, no, no, the accumulator is a register. Okay. So the ACC, yes. This, people always muck, muck this one up. Is that the control unit is a component. The arithmetic logical unit, which is a hell of a mouthful, is a component. Although, although Jelly, to be fair, you had all bases covered there, so it's okay. Um, ROM is ROM, read only memory. ACC is the accumulator. That is a register. Remember, it's like a scratch pad inside the um, ALU. Um, yeah, this is where it's confusing, right? Is that, yeah, I know. So so you've got you've got the accumulator, which is a register that sits inside the a component, uh, the, um, the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit. I can hardly get it out. So that's what's happening. Go back to that diagram. It makes sense to have a register sat inside the, the, the calculator. The calculator, doesn't it? So that's what it should have been. Okay. 
Uh, I've gone, what did I say I'd do? Half an hour. Question seven. Which of these statements is true about von... Which of these statements about von Neumann architecture is true? What do we think? And this is what makes his, his memory different, is, is, is this fact. Is it A, is it B, or is it C? Things seem to have gone very quiet. B, says Pablo, let's have a look. Oop, they're, they're flooding in. We've got B for Pablo. We've got B for Jelly. We've got B for Disson. We've got B for Ishag. Well, you, you, well only if you're right. Uh, <laughs> We've got Ziggy telling Pablo to shush. Uh, who want to copy you? Oh, it's all getting quite competitive. Don't mind that. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Right. Before we all come to blows, let's uh, let's find out what the answer is. It is data and instructions are both stored in primary memory. Okay. So that is that's the von Neumann architecture. All right. Let's go to the next one. I'm aware I've gone slightly over, but I've got more questions to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, all, it's all getting a bit tense. Um, so, what is the function of the CPU? Now, come on, guys. I am, uh, I am expecting a super quick answer here. B, says Ishak. Uh, B, says Jelly. Uh, yeah, I mean, guys, you're right. B, says Pablo. That is outstanding. Paul Berner says B quite a lot of times. That's quite impressive. It's a lot of Bs. So you are all absolutely uh, superstars. Okay, now the amazingly fun game of Guess the Question. I thought this one up by myself. I'm very proud of this. Um, so I'll tell you what, uh, this part, rather than guess, guessing the question, these are registers. Could you write in order what you think these registers are? If you know this, you are you are a god among computer scientists because this is the one that people always get wrong. Because when it comes to knowing what the registers actually do, it's it's hard to remember. So what do we think these are? So what are they in order though? What's what's the we've got the stores the uh, address location where data will be read, written, accessed. We've got stores the data uh, instruction. That data gives you a clue. Um, Stores the address of the next instruction, the one that points at it. Do you know, you were asking about that one. And stores the results of m manipulation. Um, and that's the one we were chatting about a second ago, Jelly. Um, you've done this in year five. Blimey, Tash, that is impressive. Um, that is impressive. So what do we think in order these registers are? We know that the, uh, the first one stores the address where data. And we've got the... Uh, we've, got, we've got two data ones. And then we've got the uh, the address location of the next instruction. So it's the data instruction that's fetched. What do we think? Okay, do you know what? We're starting to get there with this. Uh, let's have a look. So this is, uh, this by the way, I have copied and sort of changed a bit. M-A-R-M-D-R-P-C. That's good, decent. That was really good. Um, and that's what they do. So just, just just to recap, right, the ones that are e easier to figure out first, so only left with a couple, are the accumulator. That stores the manipulation, the, the, the calculations, okay, from the from the ALU. You had MAR, MDR, PC, and ACC. Yeah, you were absolutely spot on there. Uh, let's have a look. MAR, MDR. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys are very, very close. Um so the PC, that is pointing the, the location of the next instruction to be run. So that's what's going to happen. So the PC is the one that's going tick, tick, tick and pointing to the next thing that's happening. You've got the accumulator holding the results from the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit. And then you've got the MAR and the MDR. And that's the, the, the data and the address, okay? The memory data register, the memory address register. Um, so Tash, I'm doing this every single um, week. Uh, I'm doing, yeah, one, one of these a week. Uh, Paul Burner, people, pe people have died for less questions than that. It's a very big game at the weekend, and I'm hoping Tottenham suffer quite a great deal. I mean, ugh, Tottenham fans, I can't imagine anything worse, can you? This here, right, 
if you're able to find a way of memorizing this page, this will be, you can guarantee to get yourself marks on, on this bit. This is the opening gambit. So if, if you get this and you're nailing, you, you have a grade under your under your belt before you sort of then go on to the next part of the paper, because this bit's always first. That this bit, last year's year 11, never quite came to grips with it. But if, you, if you're prepared to go and watch the videos, look at that diagram, you will totally nail that, all right? Right, the next bit here is, um, so that, that was the question, by the way. You, see, you hear the answers we looked at. This one here. The question was voiced this way. They said, describe the purpose of two registers. So you could have picked any two of those. And, and, don't, and don't forget, right, even though I've put all of this uh, information here, you don't need to learn all of this. You can just, you, you see where I've got the, um, the forward slashes. You just need to learn one or two of those. You don't need to learn the whole thing, right? But recognising what it does is the key thing. So that was the question for that. I'll push on because I've not got much left now, uh, I don't think. Um, okay, so here is a guess the question question. Yeah, Tash, I'll do one of these a week. I know people are a bit anxious about the programming side of it. And, I'm, and for those who are, um, uh, so they're all registers. Yeah, 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 Ishak. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Tash, I'll come back to you in 20 seconds. All of these are registers, right? So those are the... Um, registers that you need to learn one two three four all right they all perform a different process um yeah jelly i know a lot of people are stressing about the program Ooh, let's do two things a lot of people are stressing about the programming so i'm going to put on a an intervention at school where those of you who are stressing about programming we can get together once or twice a week for 40 minutes and just go through some past paper questions and you will reach the point in the next two or three months where you suddenly go oh okay i get it because they are quite repetitive. Uh, now, jumping to this one, I think that Pablo has answered this question, which is, describe the fetch decode execute cycle. <laughs> that is completely what the question was. So, so, so literally, that is, um, that's what you need to know about the fetch decode execute cycle. An instruction is fetched from memory, it's decoded, the decoded instruction is then executed. So really, all you're doing is putting a bit of, a bit of spam around fetch decode execute, aren't you? The process is repeated. So each of these, right, I've taken this from a previous mark scheme. Each of these was worth one mark up to a total of, I think, three or four. So these are the sort of bullet points, each worth a mark that were taken from the OCR mark scheme. So that, Pablo, is outstanding. But if you look at that now, some of these are quite easy. I mean, thinking about um, the process is repeated. The program counter is incremented, that word that we looked at earlier, which is increased by one, okay? Um, an instruction is fetched from memory, and of course it's fetched from RAM, that's the memory. It's decoded. The decoded instruction is then executed, and the CPU performs this continuously. I was going to say just like a machine. It is a machine. Um, <laughs> Ziggy, you're a terrible troublemaker. Honestly. Um, they were pretty on it with people looking at people's papers. <laughs> if Arun looked at Rajan's paper, do you reckon? Is, it, is his eyesight that good? I don't know. Right, let's go to this one. Uh, yeah, you were right. It was. What was your one? Um, you said, yeah, it, it was identified two events that take place during the fetch decode exit cycle. So that thing we just looked at here, that was the answer for that one. All right, we have come to the end. What, what have I done? Oh, you guys have been really brave to stick around for this long. So my recommendation is have a look at the videos that I've put on there uh, on, on YouTube. Just take take a pad of paper out or take out your phone, watch it and just take some notes on how the data moves around because that'll really help you. Um, think about the functions that it performs. Uh, learn the role of the registers. I'll test you on the registers every single time you come back until you know them. Um, think about the registers, the registers are storing data rather than addresses. Make sure you're happy with cache versus registers versus virtual. Um, and we talked about virtual memory and the impact it can have on uh, Party Next Door. Okay, I know what that is. Um, is that on YouTube? Um, uh, use the knowledge organizer that, 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 I've, that I've sent through to you. Learn those key terms and uh, that's... Um, retrospective re revision planner i'm struggling with, with my words now the excel spreadsheet that will what you need to do take care sir okay yeah you take care guys 
Um, have a uh, have a lovely uh, week, and I will see you. Uh, I'll see you next time. And I'm going to be covering. I, I, don't, I don't think it is that next week that I'm doing actually, but the list is on YouTube, and hopefully you've had that through for me. Guys, take care. Have a good evening, and I will see you same time next week. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>